Hey, it's Sarah, and welcome back to my channel. Sorry. Hey, ya! I'm kidding now. Ha! 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 Today we're doing a video that's very atypical. I uh, wait, no, again. Hey, ya! It's Sarah, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a video about vertical GPU mounts. Yay! Huh? Okay, <laughs> wait, so vertical GPU mounts. I know it's probably weird to make a video about it, but hear me out. I've been building my PC in what seems like forever because it's so difficult to get the parts that I want. And out of all the things that I had to get for my PC build, uh, getting a vertical GPU mount has got to be the most interesting part of it all. And it's because even though they all fit my case, which is the Leonly O11 XL, even though they all fit, you don't really know if the mount is going to fit your needs. So I figured why not make a video about it and show you guys what I mean. And as long as I can help one person out there, then that's good enough for me. So long story short, I did tons of research, watched a lot of videos, and bought a GPU mount. It fit okay, but it wasn't perfect, so I went out and bought one more just to be sure. From there, I got a little obsessed with finding a better one for me and then I ended up going down this damn rabbit hole. Anyways, I finally found one I really liked after 5 tries and I was thinking, dude, this case I have is super popular and everyone has it. I bet there has to be a couple of others out there who might benefit from a video. So here we are. So here are the mounts we're going to be looking at today. We have the one made by Cooler Master and this one is the latest version of their kit. This one doesn't come with a 4.0 PCIe riser cable, only 3.0, and this one is about 60 US dollars at the time of this upload. Next is the one made by Leon Lee specifically for the O11 Dynamic XL. There is a version of this one available that has a 4.0 PCIe cable, or you can get the 3.0 version. It's 56 US dollars for the 3.0 version and 80 dollars for the 4.0 version. Cable Mod also makes a vertical mount. As of now, they only have a 3.0 cable that comes with it and it costs $60. Next up is the Fantex Vertical GPU Bracket. Now, this one comes with a 3.0 cable only and it's also the cheapest one on the list. This actually was the first one that I bought because it had a really small footprint and I liked that about it. Finally, we have the Link Up Vertical GPU Mount. This one comes with a 4.0 cable, and the nice thing about this one is it comes in different lengths as well. You can get the 15 or 20 centimeter version for around $95, with a 25 centimeter version costing around $109. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the case that I'm using is the Leon Lee O11 XL. Most people who have this case are planning to do water cooling, which I'm also going to be doing as well. And let's take a look over here. So first things first that we want to look for in our vertical GPU mount is it has to be able to clear our radiator and our fan. Clearing the bottom radiator and fans is going to be a given for almost all of you guys if you water cool with this case. Now for the ones that I have, we need to clear about 70 millimeters. Now, obviously, the rest of my requirements might be different from yours, but for me, I need one with a small, narrow footprint. I think it looks better, but also, I'll be running a tube in the front of the mount. So the mount has to stop right around here and take up only the space in this area here. So just to visualize it, the tube will go over this port and the tube will run across the way this way. So the mount is going to stay right here in the back behind the tube. And that's the main reason we need one with a small footprint. I could have turned the radiator around and I wouldn't have this requirement, but I like the look of having that tube at the bottom. So the GPU will be connected to the top slot here, but I also need to run a small capture card for recording at the bottom slot here. So the other thing on the wish list, which I found is almost impossible was to find a GPU mount that allows enough space behind it and also requires the least amount of modification to it. Okay, first card up, this one is the link up. This one measures 80 centimeters from the bottom of the case excluding the riser. Now as you can see here, the footprint is actually pretty small and might work for a lot of you. 
For me, it sticks out a little too far forward and will block my port. But other than that, I think it would have worked for what I was looking for. I'd have to do some cutting to make a second card fit, but there is space. Oh, this, this is actually a lot more sturdy than I thought it would be. Again though, it's just a little too wide and covers my ports, so no go for me. But it might work for you. The other thing about this mount is that you can move it up in the case if you need more space below you. Doing that can actually get you 127mm of space from the bottom of the case. You could fit a thick 60mm radiator if you wanted to, but keep in mind it also moves your card up so unless you have a really short GPU or GPU water block, it's going to cover a lot of your motherboard. It still might be useful to have that option for some people though. Next up, we have the least expensive mount in this roundup. This one is the one made by Fantex. This one has similar clearance as the Link Up, and like that one, you can raise it up and you can get 119 millimeters of space from the floor. At first glance, I really like this one because of the really small footprint. You can see that it wouldn't block the tube running up. But the Achilles heel is that it felt so flimsy and the water block that I'm putting on it is really heavy. So at the end of the day, I decided this one isn't the one for me. No bueno. No bueno. Next, we have the Liangli GPU mount, which they made specifically for this case. And you can really see it too. You have 80 millimeters of space from the bottom, excluding the riser on this one. So the first thing you notice about this one is it's really bulky and covers almost the complete width of the bottom of the case. See how wide it is? It probably wouldn't bother a lot of you out there, but for me, it just seems too big, covering up the fans completely. But there are things I really like about this mount. It's really, really sturdy, and it's probably the most stable mount you can find. Now below here, obviously it's going to block my port, so it's a no-go for me. But it actually has a lot of good things going for it. Like you can actually fit more than one card and there's no need to make any mods to the back of it. They already have the slots open and ready to go for you, so you can just put the riser cable underneath for the front one. And then the second card can just go behind. Oh, also I want to point out that this has a stabilizer bar that you can connect to it to make it more sturdy. It screws in around here and you can connect to the case back here. You guys see it? Yeah, see? That's, one, just, that's just one of the advantages of getting a mount made specific for the case. So this mount here is the cable mod mount. It looked promising, but it doesn't fit flush with the case. See right here, you see that gap? So it doesn't fit flush. So it's a no-go, obviously. See right here? Yeah, no bueno, no bueno. The reason it doesn't fit flush is because the tabs at the end here that go into the slots of the case are too long. So what happens is that it hits my power supply unit and it won't go any further. I suppose you could just put a screw in with a washer in between, but I decided to just move on from it. Here is the one that I ended up picking. This one is made by Cooler Master. This one actually sits higher and gives 91mm of space from the bottom of the case, not counting the riser, and 80mm of clearance where it's attached. But look at the footprint of this one, guys. It's basically non-existent, and this is one of the things that I was looking for. Seating area for the GPU is really thin, as you can see here. Your fans aren't covered. It's just really minimalistic, which I really like. Also, as you can see, my tube will clear just fine with no problems. Also, check this out, guys. You can move this to the right if you need to line up your GPU better. It's another nice feature that only this one has. It also feels pretty sturdy too. There's also enough space here behind it to fit a card as well. But you'll have to make a cutout to access the ports of the second card. There's about 40 to 50 millimeters of space behind it. Overall, this is the one you guys, at least for me. <laughs> 
Now, the only thing that I don't like about it, and this is just me being nitpicky now, it's that it sits almost too tall for me where it gets too close to the RAM on my board. On the flip side, the look and the spacing gets balanced out by the tube that goes below it. But if it sat about 7 millimeters lower, it would have been super perfect. Overall, I really love this GPU mount. Okay, so that ends our vertical GPU mount roundup. <laughs> I hope I was able to help at least one of you guys out there. And if I did, let me know in the comments down below, sound off, and of course, give this video a thumbs up and to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.